In this video, we're diving deep with 30 beautiful plants, shrubs, and even trees that will provide winter interest in your landscape. I'm a huge proponent for designing with four seasons in mind, so much so that I even have a course called Design Your Four Season Garden. And what I always tell my students is to start with this winter interest because this will give you the structure and the interest you need to enjoy your landscape for a lot longer than just a few weeks here, a few weeks there when things are blooming. So if you start with winter interest in mind, you're gonna set yourself up for success when you're picking all of your other plants for your landscape. So let's get right into these beautiful plants for winter interest. Let's start with evergreens for winter interest in the garden. First up is blue holly castle spire. It grows in zones five through seven in full sun to part shade and it gets six to ten feet high and four to five feet wide. Castle spire is known for its pyramidal and elegant shape making it suitable for hedges, groupings, and mass plantings. It produces small white blooms in spring that attract bees and later ornate red berries appear if a male pollinator like castle wall is nearby. You could see that the foliage and the berries on this shrub would both provide amazing winter interest. Next up is Weeping Norway Spruce. It grows in zones three through seven in full sun and it gets about four to 15 feet high and wide. The Weeping Norway Spruce tree is a very cold hardy, a beautiful evergreen tree that can serve as a focal point in your winter landscape. It adapts to almost any soil type when sited in a sunny location. It's low growing, drooping branches stay green in winter and it has this interesting weeping form that's sure to draw attention. These are best used as a specimen tree to form the centerpiece of your winter landscape. Next up is Gold Mop Cypress. It grows in zones four through eight in full sun and gets about three to four feet high and wide. The Gold Mop Cypress is easy to grow, cold hardy to zone four, disease resistant, and drought tolerant once established. Its weeping form, soft textured foliage, and bright pop of yellow green offers a welcome contrast from most traditional evergreens you'll see because of this beautiful color. This is a dwarf shrub. It stays small at about three to four feet high and wide, but I've actually seen in Northeast PA, these get a quite a bit larger. They do take pruning well, but keep that in mind and make sure that you have the space for this beautiful shrub. I think it's definitely worth the space no matter how big it gets. Next up is Blue Star Juniper. It grows in zones four through eight in full sun. It gets two to three feet high and three to four feet wide. And I know it says full sun, but this one does really well for me in partial shade as well. Blue Star Juniper is compact mounding evergreen shrub with a unique steel blue foliage color. It can be used as a ground cover or in rock gardens because it's got such a low growing spreading habit. It's not really the best choice for a foundation planting or as a backdrop, but it's really easy to grow and it can tolerate lots of different soil types and conditions, including urban environments, drought-like conditions once established, and it's fairly deer resistant too. Winter Gem Boxwood grows in zones five through nine in full sun to part shade, gets two to four feet high and one to three feet wide. So it would be difficult to provide a list of evergreens for winter interest without including some variety of boxwoods. So here we have winter gem. This is a compact variety that grows quickly as far as boxwoods go, about four to six inches per year. Boxwoods are typically slow growers and its shiny dark green leaves add beautiful color and structure to gardens, making it great for a foundation planting or even a hedgerow. It takes pruning and shaping really well and it keeps this color through the winter. Boxwoods are fairly deer resistant and grow in a wide range of conditions. And winter gem in particular has a pretty good resistance to both boxwood blight and leaf miner, which are two of the most common issues you'd face when growing boxwood. So that's why it made it on this list. Here we have Elite PJM Rhododendron. This grows in zones four through eight in full sun to part shade. It gets four to five feet high and four to five feet wide. And this is really cold and hardy and easy to care for. It's a broad leafed evergreen with smooth shiny leaves that stay on the shrub all year long. In the fall, the deep green color of the leaves turns a reddish purple like you see in this photo. And that's in the fall and it lasts all the way through winter. It's an excellent foundation planting. It's it's great for hedges and it could create just the right amount of privacy because of its size. Next up are flowering plants that bloom in the winter and I bet you maybe you didn't even know that there are flowering plants for winter. So let's get right into this with the great white hellebore. This grows in zones four through nine, part to full shade and it gets about two feet high. Hellebores come in all different colors and they're a beautiful addition to your winter garden. Great white is a hybrid variety with large four inch snowy white flowers which are larger than most hellebores. It blooms from late winter through mid spring. The stems are sturdy to hold up those gorgeous blooms. It has glossy green leathery leaves that stay evergreen all year in warmer climates, adding to its winter appeal. Hellebores require well-drained soil, but they're tolerant of most soil types and they are deer resistant and attract bees. And just to note that hellebores are a member of the buttercup family and they're toxic to dogs, cats, and horses. So just keep that in mind if you have any pets. Here we have early snowdrops. This grows in zones three through eight, full sun to part shade. And they're only about six inches high, so very low growing. Early snowdrops can be purchased as bulbs. They have uh, white winged teardrop shaped blooms 
that appear as the snow begins to melt in late winter. The blooms kind of droop downward on the stem and they look great in rock gardens, under trees, naturalized in the lawn, and even along paths. Just be aware that these hardy snowdrops multiply rapidly, but they're technically not considered invasive in the US. This is Winter Heath Kramer's Red. It grows in zones six through eight in full sun to part shade. It gets about one foot high by two to three feet wide, so a little bit more of a spreading mounding habit to it. Heats are an, an incredible addition to a winter garden because they actually bloom from early winter to spring, December through May, I'd say. Kramer's Red Winter Heath has magenta flowers. It makes a great ground cover because it's so low growing and you can try planting it in rocky, poor soils that drain very quickly after rainfall. This plant needs acidic soil. So if you don't have that, you may need to fertilize with an acid loving formula every few years. It's a great plant for rock gardens or coastal gardens. It's also very pollinator friendly and somewhat deer resistant because they don't like the taste of it. Here's Arnold Promise Witch Hazel. It's a native cultivar, grows in zones five through nine in part to full shade. It gets about 15 feet high and wide. This tree has amazing four season interest with an open spreading habit. The flowers have wavy clear yellow petals and red cups on bare branches in late winter to early spring. And they're fragrant too. It gets blazing orange fall foliage. It's a real problem solver plant as an understory beneath older shade trees. It likes acidic soil, but it grows in clay and it's fairly adaptable. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you've already seen the witch hazel, but I had to include it here because of how early it blooms. Next up, we have some perennials with texture like seed pods, seed heads, or foliage that are great for winter gardens. First here is Sedum Autumn Joy. It grows in zones three through nine in full sun. Gets about one and a half to two feet high and wide. Autumn Joy Sedum is very low maintenance and easy to grow. It prefers full sun and well-drained soil, but it's pretty adaptable to different conditions. In late summer, it gets beautiful flat topped flowers in different shades of pink. It's very pollinator friendly. And what I love about Autumn Joy is how beautiful it can also look in the winter. The seed heads get very dark and the plant stays upright all winter, making it a great plant for late season and winter interests. And I also have another video on this channel that you can check out that shows how to divide different types of sedums. And this is one that I feature in that. Sedum Angelina here is a ground cover that grows in zones four through nine and part sun to part shade. It gets four to six inches high and 18 to 24 inches wide. Sedum Angelina is one of my favorite ground covers. It usually says it needs full sun, but I grow it in almost complete shade with no issues. So it's very adaptable. New growth is yellow and all spring and summer, this plant is a very vibrant green color. In the fall, it turns almost an orange color and this lasts through the entire winter. I'm in zone six and I find this plant to be evergreen here. It spreads really slowly. It doesn't choke out other plants and it's super easy to remove or divide. I highly recommend trying out Sedum Angelina if you're looking for an easy care ground cover that also provides some beautiful winter color in your garden. This is a still be visions in white. It grows in zones four through eight in part shade to full shade and it gets one and a half to two feet high and wide. Visions in white a still be is a pollinator friendly perennial that does really well in part to full shade like along the edge of woodlands. It has a uh, bronze green foliage and elegant white blooms. It's a rare to find a plant that will bloom so beautifully as the astilbe in the shade. And it's also resistant to most diseases. Deer and rabbits tend to leave it alone. And if you don't trim astilbe in the fall, you'll also be rewarded with rusty sticks or tufts sticking up from the ground that catch the snow beautifully like in this photo. This plant does well with a lot of moisture, but also likes well-drained soil and organically rich soil. So lots of fertilizer. Here we have purple cone flower grows in zones three through eight in full sun to part sun blooms in mid to late summer for about 10 weeks in my garden it gets about four feet high by three feet wide this is a perennial that is native to moist prairies meadows and open woods of the central to southeastern united states purple cone flowers are a must for any cottage style garden they stand pretty tall at four feet high the pinkish purple blooms last from mid to late summer through most of the fall and the seed heads are a great food source for birds and look beautiful when you leave them for the winter in the garden like in this photo here. This is Joe Pie Weed, the variety Baby Joe. It grows in zones two through nine in full sun to part sun. It blooms in late summer through fall, about seven and a half weeks in my garden. Um, it gets four feet high and three feet wide, but it does gradually spread out. Baby Joe is a native cultivar of the traditional Joe Pie Weed, which is native to Eastern and Central North America. And this is a great choice as it's a late season statement for the garden. It blooms late summer into fall and it has four feet foot long stems with green lance shaped foliage and the flowers at the top are made of these little florets and bracts in a dusty rose color. It's very, very beautiful and absolutely covered in bees. In the winter, it remains upright and it can look rather beautiful in the frost and snow. And this is just a picture from my own landscape here. Okay, let's talk about some ornamental grasses for winter interest. First, we have Carl Forrester Featherweed Grass. 
This grows in zones four through nine in full sun to part shade. It gets about four to five feet high and only one and a half to two feet wide. Carl Forster is an absolutely beautiful feather reed grass that I have in my own garden. I love it just because it's narrow and upright and it just sways in the breeze in a really lovely way. Even though it's a cool season grass, Carl Forster blooms quite early in early summer, shooting these beautiful tan stems about five to six feet into the air and they just float and sway above other plants in the garden. In the winter, the green color of the grass bleaches out into a pale but like a warm tan that stays upright. It creates a really beautiful structural element in the garden. Carl Forrester is just a really standout, beautiful grass all year long, not just in the winter. This is pink mulhi grass. It grows in zones six through 11 in full sun to part shade. It gets two to three feet high by two to three feet wide. And pink mulhi grass is an ornamental grass that thrives in full sun, but it also tolerates a bit of shade. It can even grow in really poor soil and it's drought and heat tolerant once it's established. Throughout the spring and summer, it's really just a delicate blue-green tuft that turns into these large airy seed heads with vibrant pink color in the fall. It almost looks like it's a floating cloud in the landscape and it's really beautiful. It just comes out of nowhere. The pink plumes fade in the winter to tan seed heads and they last all winter long, which is why it made this winter interest list. It's just a beautiful plant, very, very unique. This is Elijah Blue Fescue Grass and it grows in zones four through nine in full sun. It gets about one feet high by one to two feet wide. And this is a photo from my own garden. Elijah blue fescue is a really versatile and compact ornamental grass with spiky steel blue foliage. It looks great in every single season, including the winter. In summer, it produces these wheat colored plumes like you see in the photo. They grow right above the grass and they add some visual interest to the landscape. It works well as a ground cover, as border edging and in containers. Blue fescue is also deer resistant and suitable for firescaping, coastal climates and low water usage. It it's also salt tolerant per my own personal experience using it to edge borders along my sidewalks in the winter weather here where the plows are coming by and they're salting the roads. And here we have some plants with berries for winter interest. First up is Beautyberry Pearl Blam. This grows in zones five through eight in full sun. It gets about four to five feet high and three to four feet wide. Pearl Glam Beautyberry is a striking and versatile flowering shrub that's low maintenance and attractive to both gardeners and wildlife. This variety is known for its beautiful deep purple foliage that you're seeing here. It also has white summer flowers and one of its standout features is the violet purple berries that show up on the branches in the fall and they add a, just a burst of color in the fall. So just imagine how beautiful these magenta berries would look with the backdrop of white snow in the winter. Some other great things about Pearl Glam Beautyberry are that it's self-pollinating, so you don't need another one to get the berries. It serves as a natural mosquito repellent and it's also deer resistant. Here we have Berry Poppins Winterberry Holly. This grows in zones three through nine in full sun and it gets only about three to four feet high and wide. This is a proven winter shrub with small greenish white flowers in late spring or early summer. And once fall approaches, it gets these bright red berries and they make this plant such a focal point in your your fall and winter landscape absolutely loaded with these red fall berries. This one isn't self-pollinating so you will need to add a male pollinator such as Little Goblin Guy Winterberry Holly to produce the stunning red berries. Since this is a proven winter shrub you can just jump on their website and it'll tell you which pollinators to use with which of their plants. Here's Little Goblin Orange Winterberry Holly. It grows in zones three through nine in full sun and another small one it gets three to four feet high and three to four feet wide. Little Goblin Orange has bright green glossy foliage all growing season. It's a deciduous holly, meaning it loses its leaves in the winter, but don't worry because its leaves are replaced with these extra large bright orange berries that provide amazing winter color with a neat and tidy growth habit. This is a proven winter shrub and again it does require a pollinator such as little goblin guy winter berry if you want those gorgeous orange berries in the fall. Here we have berry nice holly. It's a proven winter's color choice shrub. It grows in zones three through nine in full sun to part shade. It gets six to eight feet high and three to five feet wide. Berry Nice is a slow growing holly with a more columnar form, meaning it gets a lot taller than it does wide. Berry Nice is also very adaptable to all kinds of conditions, including wet soils. It has improved mildew resistance compared to some other hollies, and it's known for these bright red berries, and I guess you could probably see why from the picture. They really add a pop of color against the dark, shiny leaves of the holly. This one does also need a male pollinator like Jim Dandy Holly to produce those berries, so make sure you pick up a male pollinator as well. 
y'all. This is Arrowwood Viburnum Blue Muffin. It grows in zones three through eight in full sun to part shade, and it gets five to seven feet high and about four to five feet wide. Blue Muffin is a compact and low maintenance shrub. It's known for its white flowers in early through midsummer. It has glossy leaves and vibrant blue berries from fall through winter. While the berries are not edible for humans, they attract butterflies, they serve as a food source for birds and wildlife, and they add a ton of unique color and interest to your winter garden. I mean, look at those berries. Blue Muffin is easy to prune to fit your space. This variety does need another viburnum close by to pollinate and get the flowers that turn into those beautiful blueberries. So you do need at least two, which is very typical for shrubs that produce berries on them. Here we have trees and shrubs with beautiful colored bark that shines in the winter. First up is Arctic Fire Red Twig Dogwood. It grows in zones three through seven in full sun to part shade. It gets about three to four feet high and wide. Arctic Fire is a dwarf variety of the red osier dogwood. And it's known for its bright red branches that become prominent during winter when the leaves drop. It's a beautiful winter interest and compact size make Arctic Fire an invaluable addition to winter landscapes. It offers white springtime flowers, attractive green foliage, and small white berries that attract birds. These deep red colored stems look amazing in the snow or against a white birch tree or something like that. This is just an awesome, awesome shrub for the winter. And here we have the yellow twig dogwood. It grows in zones four through nine in full sun to part shade, six to 10 feet high and five to six feet wide. Again, white flowers in spring, white berries in fall. And not only that, this is a very impressive plant for winter interest with its bright yellow twigs. It's a very wildlife and butterfly friendly. The twigs will be much brighter with at least some sun. So the more sun it gets, the brighter and the more colorful these will be. And it's very adaptable to different soil types. It's great for erosion control. It tolerates slope planting well. These are not deer resistant. I, again, I repeat, not deer resistant, so just keep that in mind. And here we have coral bark, Japanese maple tree. This grows in zones three through seven in part shade. And it gets about 20 to 25 feet high and 15 to 20 feet wide. So a pretty small ornamental tree, I'd say. And the coral bark, Japanese maple tree definitely provides multi-season interest in the landscape. It features fine dissected foliage with like reddish margins on grass green colored leaves. The leaves turn a luminous golden orange color in the fall. When the leaves fall away in the winter, the coral bark of this tree is truly shining. The red sap flowing inside the tree gives it this intense red bark color year round, not just in the winter, but I swear you'll never get tired of looking at these crimson branches with the backdrop of white snow behind them. It's absolutely incredible in the winter. And there are also different forms of coral bark maples available including a single stem, multi-stem varieties, and it's also available in a shrub form, so be sure to check this one out. It has its best color in partial shade, which is kind of interesting compared to some of the others, and it does tolerate full sun in cooler regions. So if you're on the lower end of that growing zone, you may get away with a full sun location for this one. Next up is the white birch tree. It grows in zones two through six in full sun to part shade. It's about 30 to 40 feet high and 15 to 30 feet wide. Uh, the white birch tree is extremely cold hardy to zone two and it features a beautiful branching structure and interesting flower blooms from April through May. The bark is white year round and it sheds its bark in interesting layers. This makes for incredible winter interest in the landscape, especially when it's placed in front of a backdrop of deep dark evergreens that really make the white bark pop in the winter. Uh, this would just look gorgeous. And here we have some trees and shrubs with exfoliating bark. Here we have Diablo 9 bark. It grows in zones three through seven in full sun to part shade, gets about 18 to 10 feet high and 8 to 10 feet wide and here are just some pictures of it in my own landscape. I love Diablo. It's a native cultivar of nine bark with white spring flowers, burgundy foliage, and beautiful exfoliating winter bark making it an outstanding shrub for four season interest in the garden. The species is called nine bark because it's believed to have nine layers of shedding bark on the stem. If Diablo is a little large for you, there are varieties of nine bark that are smaller like tiny wine. It gets about three to four feet high and wide so you may also want to check that out. I think I have another one called Little Joker that's about the same size. Beautiful, beautiful shrub. Here we have River Birch Tree. It grows in zones four through nine in full sun to part shade. Gets about 40 to 50 feet high and 25 to 40 feet wide. River Birch is a Native American deciduous tree and it's highly adaptable, heat tolerant, and it's also resistant to the bronze birch borer. It has deer resistance and it thrives in moist soils. Its foliage provides interest in every single season. It changes from this fresh green color in spring to dark green in summer and brilliant buttery yellow in the fall like you see on the screen here. The river birch is known for its beautiful bark which exfoliates
radiates to reveal salmon pink and cinnamon brown colored patches beneath. This makes it a real standout tree in every season, but especially in the winter when the leaves are gone and you can really enjoy the beauty of the bark. This is paper bark maple tree. It grows in zones four through eight in full sun to part shade. Gets about 20 to 30 feet high and 15 to 25 feet wide. The paper bark maple tree provides visual interest throughout the year with a full canopy of leaves in spring and summer. It has vibrant fall colors and striking bark in the winter. The cinnamon colored peeling bark is definitely the distinctive feature of this paper bark maple. The bark actually curls like paper revealing an inner layer of this rich red orange color. And just imagine how gorgeous this would look in the winter landscape. It will bring some much needed warmth to a cold space and it reaches a manageable height of like 20 to 30 feet, which makes it great for both small and large yards. And as always, this isn't an exhaustive list. So if I missed any of your favorite plants for winter interest, leave them in the comments below for us. I can't wait to see what you suggest. And I absolutely love plant lists. I think they're a great source of inspiration, but there's still so much more to learn about combining plants and designing with four seasons of interest in mind. So if you wanna create a landscape that looks great in every single season, so you can enjoy your garden for the longest time possible, check out my Design Your Four Season Garden course at prettypurpledoor.com course. All the links to the plants mentioned in this video are in the description below if you wanna check them out or even purchase them online. And if you like this, you're also gonna love my video about creating winter interest in the garden. I share all kinds of feature ideas and tips. It has a lot more info far beyond this list of just cool plants. So head over to that video. I'll leave a link to it right here and I'll see you over there.